You have so much info, some tips and tricks here and there. Thank you, people of Twitter. Yes, here's the now show. Very... Uh, and heartfelt, pretty much. Let's pick up from last year's Melody Festival. Did you know that you are one of three acts from last year that made a music video for your Mellow entry? No, I did not. I knew I, I knew I made at least the music video that I know. I remember that. But no, I don't remember. I, don't, I didn't know that there were only two other acts. Who yeah. did who did the music video? Uh, Felix Sandman and what's it? I don't remember the last one. I put you on the spot. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> interview like that. But okay, I didn't know that. That's but, that's crazy. That, that fewer people that, that more people didn't do it. Yeah. It's too bad because people want to have more visuals. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. I guess maybe like the performance in itself becomes like a music video and it's so mm -hmm. visual anyway. Maybe that's why a lot of people don't do it. But for us, I, we always wanted to make a music video like even before we even knew what the number looked like and stuff like that. We we just said we need a music video for the song. Yeah, and we love an artist who delivers visuals. Tell us about the making of the music video "Talking in My Sleep" and who did you collaborate with? Um, I collaborated with uh, Lerhun Productions uh, and uh, Maya, the the director as well. And it was just in a conversation with uh, one of the producers who, where we needed something quickly to be done because we didn't have time because I came uh, in, let's see, it was the second competition and then I was in the second chance and then I was in the final. So the schedule became so hectic during the actual competition that we didn't have time to shoot it. And then we needed something that we could shoot after the final and release really, really quickly. So in a conversation, I came up with the idea that, you know, we have this bed and we just put a projector above it. And then that becomes like a visual effect that you don't have to do in post. You can do it live. Mm -hmm. So you know, editing the video would just be cutting different sequences together. We don't have to do a lot of post. And that's the, the first idea that we had was all effects and it was all post. So the post work would take six weeks and that would take too long because we didn't have the time to, to shoot it at, when we when we wanted to shoot it. We wanted to shoot it in January and it just didn't pan out. So that's actually the idea. We needed something that was quick and something that was really effectful. And the idea of a projector solved it for us. And then tying the idea visually together with the lyrics, with me being in a bed and stuff like that, it just made sense. And that's how it came about. And did you have to get your wife, wife's improvement to have her in the video? Was it like difficult to get it or was just fine? No, yeah, of course I had to ask her and see if she was okay with it because it's our private footage from our mm -hmm. vacations and trips and stuff like that. Um, but she was okay with it and we did a, I did a music video for the song Fool For You that is a, our, our wedding video and mm -hmm. that was actually her idea of just, mm -hmm. we were just shooting a bed, wedding video and we wanted it to be like three or four minutes. So when the, when the cameraman who has shot it, when they were like, yeah, so what song do you want us to put on there? We were like discussing different songs that we like and, and we wanted just to ha have it as a wedding video. And she was just like, this shouldn't be just a wedding video. This could be a music video as well. Just put Fool For You there and that's it. And that was her idea. So uh, she was fine with it. And uh, and it was a really good idea with Fool For You and then putting uh, the private personal footage in uh, this video, Talking In My Sleep, uh, kind of made sense as well. It makes it more intimate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. After your Melody Festival in 2020, you released a follow-up up single, Mistakes. Tell us about that song. Mistakes was written over Zoom. It was, I think, my second session. I was done online. And it was really, it was really special. Um, it was written with Nick and Lewis uh, from the UK. And... We had a really tough time for a couple of hours coming up with stuff that we liked. We had a bunch of different melodies and a bunch of different lyrics. And and then after a while, it just kind of ran out of us. Uh, it just flew out naturally. And 
it came it turned out to be this song mistakes and uh, it was released like really shortly after it was done it was done in april and i think it was released in june it's about a relationship that has ended and the person kind of reflecting over but damn maybe it ended too soon because there's so many more mistakes that i want to do with you there's so many more uh fuck ups in life that i want to go through with you because i think like an important part of a relationship is not just the good times it's also learning from each other and learning from mistakes um and you grow strong going through tough times together and going through uh, dumb shit and bullshit together as well like that you you learn a lot about each other uh through those through those moments so i just wanted to kind of have this reflective thought of a relationship in a in a different way than just oh i miss you because i love the way we uh, lit candles at night and watch movies and i love the way we took walks on the beach this is like no i actually like the way we made mistakes and how we carried each other through them is it challenging to write songs over zoom um yes and no it's it's gone so quick all of the sessions that i've had over zoom has always been a one day session and there've been from five to seven hours and then we have the whole song finished um i i just there's something with like we don't really you're not really as social when you meet for the first time it's just like you talk for maybe 10 minutes and then it's like okay we're here to make a song let's make a song you don't have to go to lunch and be social like there's less of the show, social stuff which is a bummer but it becomes more effective working because everybody has their lunch with them and they can just heat it up in the microwave because they're at home or in their studio and it's like when i start recording the producer be like okay well you know i just work on the beat on uh, and meanwhile and then the lyrics uh, if if i if there's uh, if i work with a songwriter maybe the songwriter starts working maybe on the second verse or just looks over some of the stuff that we've come up with it's just way more effective so it's tough maybe to get the get a vibe that's a little bit tougher but somehow it's more effective did you draw the single artwork for that song i did yeah i did <laughs> <laughs> that's it there you go that's it that's a one line kind of thing yeah 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 i did that was it hand drawn or made digitally i was hand drawn on an ipad so it was hand drawn digitally it was both but um uh, Yeah, it was the same thing there like we needed an artwork and I did one pretty quickly. Kind of like it. Looks cool, but mm -hmm. uh it was really and I didn't have the same hairdo. I had the I don't know what to call it in English, but uh, I had the other uh, hairdo, the potrilla. Uh yeah. <laughs> so that's what I kind of draw. That's what that's what I drew then, but now I just have the classical white dude put the hair on the side. Here we go. Mm -hmm. What what software did you use to create it? I used uh, Pro I think it's called Procreate, yeah, on mm. the iPad. It's really good. It's really it's really really good. So I've, I've done a bunch of different sketches. I'm not good at drawing or anything, but it was yeah, I don't know, it was just fun. Looks great. Thanks. Uh you released another song which is Man Alive, which is was dedicated to your daughter. Tell us about that. Um so that was that was written in the summer um when my wife was like six months pregnant or something like that and it's uh, yeah it's our first child um so of course i was like thinking about a lot about parent uh, being a parent and to prepare yourself mentally to have a child and stuff like that you know i was it was it was a lot uh, emotionally and of course then a lot of songs came out um i wrote i, I wrote a lot of songs about that subject and uh, richest man alive is one of my favorites uh, from from this past year that i wrote and um yeah it's just pretty much you don't need anything else in life when as long as you have family and and that's just what richest man alive is about as long as she's by my side i'm the richest man alive i've noticed you keep collaborating with the photographer Jens Nordström for scene covers and your press photos how did you yeah. meet him and what makes you keep working with him um he's a photographer based in malmo as well um so his studio is not super far from from mine and he's really really talented and we're both 
really creative and we have a really good co collaboration of discussing ideas and uh, kind of visual styles that we want to that we want to create so um it's natural for me to keep collaborating with him and uh i met him actually through a contact at uh, warner music uh, that has worked with him before so that's how i got to know him and then mm -hmm. now it's like uh, as, as soon as we need an artwork or uh, some press photos it's a natural natural choice for me he's really really great what is your approach in writing new songs do you start with lyrics or melodies it's really different uh, from time to time it's and it's a really a combination um, either i start with maybe the title or what i want the song to be about if it's a phrase or something that kind of caught my attention or that i thought was catchy or just kind of expresses what I want to write about. Um, so I, I have an idea, kind of, not the lyrics, but just an, an idea or a title. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of produce melodies that would fit that kind of mode that the uh, title would be in and stuff like that. And combine melodies with chords, try to come up with everything that so it sounds pretty good. And then I add the actual final lyrics. So it could be like a line or a title that I start with in the beginning, beginning, and then it's, it's like chords, melodies, and then I and then I put the lyrics in. So it's a little bit of back and forth. And how does your songwriting process change when you collaborate with different writers? It changes. I mean, yeah, sometimes uh, a songwriter could have an idea right off the bat uh, for a title or for a melody or something like that, and then we could work on that if we all like it in the in the uh, in the room. Or sometimes it's just that we all join the same process. That like okay. I usually I usually have a title or an idea. What do you think would be a good idea to write about, or what could I good topic or a good phrase? And then we bounce ideas together, and then we kind of, maybe we we do melodies together and stuff like that. It's very it's very different. Uh, talking in my sleep, for instance, Alexander, the songwriter, he had the melody, uh, the intro melody on the piano and the chords. He had those, and that was an idea that he has had for three years, and he never made a song of it, just because it never really felt right. But and he said it was something in the room that was just like, and because I played a couple of my songs before, so he heard my vocals and stuff like that, and he just thought, I think you would fit perfectly for these chords and this vibe. So he played the da 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 do do do. And then he played the the chords afterwards, and the first thing that came out of my mouth was "Lately I've been talking in my sleep." And just it just came out, and then the, the song was there. So that took like three minutes, and so it's very different from from song to song. Is there a part of the songwriting process you find difficult creating? Yeah, no, I could get stuck anywhere. Honestly, I could get stuck at lyrics. I could get stuck at melodies. I could get stuck at chords. It's it's from a day to day basis. So it's never the same the same place. Sometimes the lyrics takes an hour. Sometimes they take a week. It's very different. Same with chords and stuff like that. So it's dangerous anywhere in the process. <laughs> Do you think having someone help you with uh, these difficulties sometimes to give you more creative freedom? Yeah, it's always nice to collaborate with people. I write a lot alone, so it's always nice when there's a co-write um, with another songwriter as well. Uh, it's nice to bounce ideas. It's nice to hear different melodies or a different take on. No, oh, maybe it should sound like this instead of that. So I always like it. Yeah, and it can definitely at, at times it helps as well. And when you're mixing your music, how do you decide what device you listen through when working? What device to listen through? Yeah, like headphones or speakers. Um, yeah, so I, I combine both. I do a lot of mixing in headphones and in mm -hmm. different headphones that have different sounds, but are like pretty typical for uh, your regular consumer or regular listener to listen through. So I know what, how they're gonna uh, perceive the, the song. Yeah, so I have like, I have four different headphones kind of, and then two different speakers that I mix through. So I make them, I'm happy when it kind of, when it sounds the same, no matter what speaker or, or headphones I'm listening to, when it kind of sounds the same, mm -hmm. I know that I'm happy with the, with the balance. And then, uh, and then I give it to a master uh, mixer and that just put the masters on and, and then it usually sounds good. <laughs>
Mm. <laughs> and from your preference, is there any different uh, difference in listening through headphones versus speakers? Yeah, um, headphones you you don't go as much on vibe. Or if you do it on speakers, you could really bump the volume and see how it feels and see how it's, it, you get a different feel for for the song and for the mix. What when and then you're a little bit more technical, or I get a little bit more technical when I have the speed when I have the headphones on. And then it's not as high volume, and I listen to more of the details and stuff like that. But of course, you do both. You bump it as well in the speed in the headphones, and you you listen technically and low on speakers as well. So it's, it, you do a combination of both, but mm-hmm. but it's always good to do both. I would say to not just mix it on speakers and not just mix it in headphones. Um, it's always good to double check on on different sources. Is it true that you used to create stop motion videos with Legos together with your brother when you were younger? Uh, yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, that's very true. Um, so we bought. We've always built a lot with Legos, especially my brother, and they had this uh, webcam back in the day. This was like 15 years ago or something like that. That looked like a Lego piece that you could actually still build mm. Legos on. So we used that in like Windows Movie Maker and we made stop footage, stop motion uh, videos. And that actual webcam that was from Lego was also the first microphone that I used to, mm. to record songs. Uh, I put a sock on it and then I started doing rap music when I was 13 or something like that. So the sock became like the puff uh, protection so it doesn't sound mm. puff, puff. And the webcam just had a mic so it became the studio microphone that I used for like a couple of songs in the beginning. So it all it all started with the Lego webcam somehow. Yeah, that's awesome. What kind of videos did you make? Oof, uh, mostly Star Wars videos I think. I like we had a lot of Star Wars Lego stuff and that was our main interest. And then some racing uh, stuff as well. We loved Formula One growing up so we did we did a lot of those. Yeah. Do you want to create videos again? Yeah, I love being creative. Uh, so stop motion is too much work, I think, to me. Mm-hmm. For, like, for me, like it's super, it's so much work. But uh, like I said, with the talking in my sleep video and the food for you video, like I'm very hands on in in the collaborations and in mm-hmm. in the ideas and in editing and everything. So. Uh, and I've made music videos on my own as well, like the California Dreamin' um, mm. original one in black white. That was that's edited and shot by me. And uh, so I'm always I'm always very creative. And uh, so yeah, definitely. Yeah, you should do like posting more videos other than your music video on your YouTube channel. Yeah, that's true. Um, just at the moment, I just don't have any time for no. it. But I would love to be more creative and more productive on on YouTube. It's a, mm. it, it will be a great platform to just, you know, create. A couple of months ago, you got your bachelor degree in business economy. And now you're yeah. taking a master's degree in international marketing and branding. What inspired yeah. you to take these courses? You have so much info. It's, fun. it's hilarious. <laughs> no, yeah, that's true. Um, so, I, you know, the, the music industry is how it is. It's very, very uh, insecure. Uh, and as a as a uh, as a market kind of so I just wanted to have a backup plan that felt more safe and during the pandemic you could even tell even more how just this specific segment was super super uh, insecure and not really supported well Um, Mm -hmm. if you if you if you had gigs all of the gigs were cancelled there's it just yeah just the nature of music, the, the music industry made me uh, want to have something more secure. And especially when we were planning to, to, to have a family and, and have kids, uh, I wanted to have something more secure just in case if it, if it was necessary. And, and thankfully, I've been able to combine both the studying and uh, being active as an artist. And it's even gone better and better and better for me as an artist once I started studying so maybe it's Mm. even good to have something to balance it with it's not just focus on music 100% of your time so that's the reason for it and uh, I'm really happy that I made the decision to study and I'm really happy it's gone as well as uh, as it has 
with your music career and studies, do you have any tips, tools or apps a student like myself can use to plan and organize my task better? Uh, that's a really good question. I started, so I bought an iPad uh, to take notes during the lectures. And this was two, a year and a half ago or something like that when we were having lectures physically uh, on the mm -hmm. spot. Now it's all digital. But so I did that to um, help memorate what they were teaching out by writing it down. And I wanted to have it digitally instead of actually doing my notes by hand and then trying kind of transferring them to a computer. It's just, it was too many steps. So mm -hmm. I bought Good Notes, which is an app for writing and taking notes. And I combined that with like, you can take the, the PowerPoint and the slides from the lecturer and take a, take a picture and then you could write around it. And you could also mm -hmm. use a keyboard uh, to write it uh, manually by, and not just, uh, you know, uh, to type it in instead of just writing it with a pen. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought that was really helpful when it came to taking notes. And planning, I, I yesterday I was planning for the whole semester because the semester started uh, yesterday. So mm -hmm. I just made up a huge list of when are all the exams, when are all the hand-ins. Just plan as much as possible so I know uh, I want to avoid as much stress here as possible because here is, is mellow. Okay, here's a release. Okay, here I need to write songs. Okay, and here's a lot of uh, hand-ins and stuff. All right, mm -hmm. then I know when I can relax, when I cannot uh, plan it as much as possible. Uh, so lists is, is something that I do for every day. I, every day I have a list of stuff I need to do because otherwise doing both music and studying, it's a lot that comes at you all the time. So today I've had to add, I think seven things to my list just because that's how it goes. You get an email and it's like, oh, we need this by the way. Oh, and by the way, have you checked out this? Uh, and mm -hmm. what are your thoughts on that? And it's like, you, you always need to be uh, flexible, but to get structure, I, I just do lists all the time. Tell us about your Mellow 2021 song and what inspired you to return to the contest? I, um, well, what inspired me was just the experience in itself last year. It was so much fun. Um, the feedback was great. Um, the people seemed to really like the song and the number and the performance and and I, it was just so much fun. So to me, it was super natural to compete again. And um, I had a song that was really, really acoustic in the beginning. So when we sent it in in September, it was really, really just acoustic. It was no other production on it, pretty much. Mm -hmm. But the song was so strong that they, they took me on board anyway. And then now it's way more produced. It's way more dynamic. It's how I imagined it, but it got done afterwards. And uh, it's really strong. I always felt like the song is really strong. So uh, to me, it just, and it feels like it visually, it invites you to do stuff visually and it invites you to, to just complete it with some visual stuff uh, mm -hmm. compared to some other songs that I write. Um, so it just fits the competition really well, I think. And it fits me as well as an artist. And if you would describe your song with three words, what would that would be? Three words would be intimate, uh, dynamic, and, uh, and heartfelt, pretty much. Was uh, the song written specifically for the contest, or did you write it first and then submit it? It's tough to say. It was at a camp where with a lot of people with from Melo, but it's not... I'm, I, I never go there just to write stuff for Melo. I, I go there to write good songs. And this was, but this was one of the songs that we wrote, wrote there. But, um, but, but yeah, it just it just fit. But it wasn't to actively chase uh, what could be good as a as a as a performance for Melo and stuff like that. It's just like I, I just try to write good songs as much as possible. Who are you collaborating with for your staging? For the staging, it's uh, mm -hmm. Sasha and Lotta from from mm -hmm. uh, Television. Uh, we did the number together last year for Talking in My Sleep, and our collaboration is really really good. We have the same kind of visual language. Uh, we have the same references, uh, so it works really flawlessly. So uh, yeah, we're doing the number again. Do you have an EP or album ready to release after Mellow? No, but I have an EP that's going to be released before Mellow. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, it's called Note to Her, and it's. Uh, and it's dedicated to my daughter and uh, there are songs there that I've wanted to release for, for some amount of time. And there are songs there that were that was written this summer. So it's a little bit of a mix of everything. 
Uh, Talking in My Sleep is on there as a bonus track. Um, but other than that, it's it's five five songs in total. And mm. I've written and produced everything. And then some have been co-written. Uh, I've mixed everything. Uh, so it's strictly, it's right from the heart. And it's kind of like a follow-up to my uh, previous uh, acoustic EP, Note to Self, mm. uh, that was released, 20, I think, 2018. Um, and that went really well. So it's just a natural follow-up to that. Do you have a release date for that yet? Yes, it's coming out 22nd of January. Awesome. Yeah. Great. What are your professional goals for 2021? 2021 um, is compete in mellow, release the EP, write a lot of songs during the summer. I'm I'm really planning on on being creative and productive during the summer. We'll see where that leads. If that leads us to actually releasing an album late during the year, or if it's next year. But um, I haven't released a full length album as Paul Ray yet so that would be really exciting to do um and then other than music is also to uh finish up my masters uh mm-hmm. in during the summer so that would be really great have you picked up any new hobbies during quarantine um no i would i wouldn't say that no i've just been at home a lot um mm-hmm. which i've been before because my home studio is at home so it's not that new for me of course, new habits is changing diapers every day. That's a yeah. new habit. <laughs> but other than that, no, it's, it's pretty much the same. Study, do music, take care of my family, and that's it. That's it. Lastly, can you give mm. three tips to anyone that wants to re- start recording music but doesn't have the money to buy fancy equipment and doesn't have the access to a studio? Well, it depends on what kind of music you want to do, what kind of genre, but... Um, if you have the chance to somehow get an instrument, borrow an instrument from a family member, from a friend or something like that, whether it's guitar or it's a, a synth or piano or something like that, it would be good to start there. Uh, and then YouTube, just a little bit of chords and how you play and stuff like that. If not, what you could do is go on YouTube again or go on SoundCloud and look up all these different instrumental and vibes and beats and stuff like that and just write songs to it because you get really good the more you do it and the more you practice and uh to 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 work on you don't have to write a song per day but to work on a song every day would do a lot and to also listen to your favorite artist and try to kind of reflect on why do you think that they're your favorite artists what is it in their songs that you like and maybe see a pattern okay they usually do this in every song uh maybe the way they structure it maybe the way they um write their lyrics just study the study the the greats and study your favorites and then maybe you figure out some tips and tricks here and there um but it's just being active every day that 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 really that really does it Thank you so much for listening to you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It was lovely. Do you have Twitter? I have, but I'm like super inactive in, on it. Okay, well then we're going to change that um, because mm. basically I went through and I bookmarked uh, some of the reactions to you being announced on Twitter because Twitter oh, is yeah. where everybody acts up. So this one is uh, them being excited that you're collaborating with Laurel. Said, could this yeah. be more iconic? Awesome. Oh, ma. <laughs> there were a lot of Spanish <laughs> ones, but I didn't save them because I didn't know if they were saying nice or bad things. So I was like, I don't want to risk it. <laughs> I'll just oh, leave no. it alone. Yeah. You play it safe. That's, that's good. That's safe. Yeah. That's good. And this one says, okay, but can he go DTF this time? That means direct to the final. Direct to the final, time. right? Yeah, there you go. Well, well hopefully, you know, right? In other contexts, it can mean down to fuck, but I don't think that's what they mean in this one. No, so. it sucks. Exactly. <laughs> it says, yes, King, please snap. So you're royalty now, apparently. Oh, um, that's nice. And then it says, yes, Paul Ray is back. I love talking in my sleep. And I hope the missing piece has more tempo slash oomph. Do you uh, have more oomph this time? <laughs> um, it has more tempo. It, uh, oomph. Well, yeah, I would say. Yeah, it has more oomph. Yes, I really wanted him to come back. I'm so happy. 
Wow, this is nice. I didn't know people at Twitter was this nice. Thank you, people of Twitter. Well, <laughs> some of them are not, but I would never save those and read them to no, you. No, exactly. Not that type of a show. Another one excited about you collaborating with Laurel. Um, oh, yeah. She's on a lot of songs, so people were definitely... Yeah, she's super good. She's super good. We've, we've written two songs together in our lifetime, and they both ended up uh, at Mellow. So it seems like we're a good collaboration together. Oh, that's good. And this one says, so many artists already revealed, but he's got to be my favorite, though. So happy to see him back. Wow. And this one is really intense. It says, legit, the only one I'm looking forward to. The Jeez. only one. Only one. Come wow. on, yo. There's going to be other good numbers, for sure. For sure. But that's really nice. That's really nice. Well, you'd, you'd certainly hope so. Otherwise, it's, you know, one out of 28. That's not, not a good percentage. I'm not <laughs> no, that quick at math, but that's not good. That's not good. No, it's really not. Can I ask, uh, hopefully this isn't a weird question. Uh, Is that a headboard behind you? Are you literally sitting in your bed right now doing the interview? Yeah, I'm in my bed. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Talking, I'm talking in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's so many jokes that can be made about that. It's like, oh, all of you that like you've been talking you know dirty on yes. the internet you're like oh i want to get in bed with paul ray yes here's the now show now they're in bed like, with you in bed with me for 30 minutes yeah dreams really do come true <laughs> that's what we do here so. exactly exactly okay. that's hilarious but do you want to make a cameo before paul leaves we can quick cameo quick cat cameo <laughs> oh now Hello. you're purring Kimiko. <laughs> Her name's Kimiko after my favorite character on the boys. Okay, go back in there. I'm gonna Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Paul. Uh yeah. best of I won't say good luck because that's bad luck. Uh, but break a leg. <laughs> like that wouldn't be bad <laughs> if I actually break a leg. No, but thank you so much for having me on. It was really nice. Yeah. Uh hopefully we talk to to you more soon during the tour. Um Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, thank if you. you're down, we're down. So come back anytime. Awesome. Awesome. Take care, y'all. Bye. Bye. Bye.